Hello and thanks for tuning in again. This is a gnarly FPV backpack. If you prowl around on the RC groups, you may every now and again hear someone mention a gnarly FPV backpack. And gnarly is G-N-A-R-L-Y FPV. Um, and I have acquired one. It's a 600 TV line uh, camera. It's 5.8 gigahertz. It has uh, dip switches for channel selection. It's a 200 milliwatt transmitter. Uh, it's operating is set for LiPo 1S um, and I'm really hopeful that I can show you this adequately how well he has built this little unit. Uh, I brought in some extra light and hopeful to bring in the focus. Um, took the time to twist the power leads. We've got electrical liquid tape that covers the antenna. Uh, we still have the shielding on the uh, transmitter which is uh, going to keep interference to a minimum uh, I believe the camera has been pre-focused uh, because the picture looks very good and the lens feels taut so I am not tinkering with that um, he took great care in shipping it was shipped in let me see if I can get this giant box you can't even get the box in the shot I've got my camera so low um, but it, it, it's a quality box and it was shipped wrapped in not one, not two, not three. Oh, yes, but three bubble wraps. So it was quite well protected in shipping. We don't oftentimes find that with products we get overseas. And this didn't come from overseas. This came from California, or at least it was shipped through California. Um, and he is... Uh, he, he makes batches of about five, um, although this specific unit is no longer available. This was one was called Mark II. Um, the new units, which may be called Mark II, I haven't, I don't remember. Um, but they are 600 milliwatt transmitters. Um, I don't believe any of the other specs changed. He recommends using a 150 milliamp uh, uh, E-Flight battery for, for power. Um, I don't have any E-Flight batteries, but I have a whole bunch of these. So that's what I tested with. Um, the, the only other thing that I would draw your attention to, uh, this, if you look at these connections, um, if you were to line them up and then you look at the color of the power, the leads, um, they don't natively connect. I know this one doesn't connect directly to, but even if I had a battery with this particular lead on it, it's not going to connect up because it seems as though this end might be reversed. Uh, but that's not a big deal because I had to make an adapter anyways, or I'm going to have to power it, wire it directly in, uh, one of the two. So you've got a little bit of work on your part you'll need to do. But these uh, connectors go in pretty nicely. And he's, he's using a quality connector on here. You see the neck on this is longer than the neck on mine. So I bought some cheap connectors off of eBay, and they have essentially no neck on them versus the neck that he's using on his. So... Um, he's taken quite uh, quite a bit of care to choose his components. And that's something I think I should talk about. I don't know what process he went through, so I'm not going to act as though I do. But I, I know that there are instructions to building something very similar to this by Sebi Docky for about 30 bucks. And 30 bucks is your raw parts cost. Um, in this case, I think you're paying for a lot more than just the raw parts cost. You're, you're paying for the craftsmanship, the fine soldering skills. Uh, you're, you're paying for the fact that I would suspect he's been through many iterations of this equipment to find the combination that works the best. Um, so you have a lot of, uh, let's say, institutional knowledge that he's gained. And so he has a combination that he feels he can put together and he can sell to the public and not have to worry about, you know, consuming all of his time supporting or people getting one and not being satisfied and having to return it and make a new one for them and going through iteration of iteration trying to make his customers happy. He makes these, people buy them, people are happy with them, they're, they're well received, and he makes them in small quantities. If you wanted to do something on your own, you very much could build something like this for less than $90. But you're not going to get this. Uh, so if you look at this camera, if you look at the back of the camera, it might resemble a uh, Banggood, um, I think it's a one gram camera. 
let me grab my camera. So I have my one gram Banggood camera here, which I bought but haven't done anything with. Oh, let's play a little music here. Okay, so you see this comes with a microphone, and that can easily be snipped off to, to fit. And if you look at the front, they look fairly similar. 600 TV line, 600 TV line, black casing. But as we get around to the back, you find different colors on the PCBs. You find the layout of the transistors and the FETs are all different. Hopefully you can see that. I'm trying to block it as well as I can. So it's obviously it's not a $9 camera. What this camera is, I don't know. I don't plan on finding out. That's uh, a trade secret. That's for his to keep. You know, you, you buy a dozen cameras and you might find the one he's using. So while this may seem expensive, I think you're paying for a quality product. I think the value is high for this product. And if I were to have another use for another one of these cameras uh, and all-in-one units, I would probably buy another one from him. Um, even at the higher price of $100, I, I would still, I think it's a great value. My plan is to put this on the uh, Quantum Wisp. Unfortunately, my props are too big because if I put it down here, it's going to hit on the antenna. If I slide it over off center, there's just there's just no way of getting clearance. And I could have, you know, ordered this and sit and you know asked for a longer antenna. That's on me, because um, he does. Oops, sorry. He does this custom, and so you can make adjustments. What I'll probably do is I have some Hubson props that arrived, and I uh, these are 60 millimeters. The Hubson props are substantially smaller. They may clear here. But there's also another nose plate I can mount on top here, and that will clear as well if I want to use these 60 millimeter props. So it's something to consider if you have one of these that you're probably going to have to make some prop size sacrifices. Um, otherwise, you're going to be using the Banggood camera, and then you're going to be doing some wiring to a transceiver, which will probably be parked back here, and then you'll have your own antenna, which is fine. That's something you can do. But I uh, look forward to flying this FPV with this particular camera. Um, I'm still not, I'm undecided how I'm going to power it. Uh, when I was testing this, I got more than 26 minutes of video and trans. Um, uh, I, I was able to receive more than 26 minutes of video using a little 150 milliamp battery. Uh, I got to 26 minutes and I just thought, well, anything beyond this, anything beyond, say, eight or nine is really worthless because you know it's a micro FPV camera you're not gonna have a huge honk in battery sure you could put it on an airplane or a glider that would fly for a substantially long time um, and 26 minutes flight time is that's a long time so this will go for at least 26 minutes off of a 150 milliamp battery and that's good so let's do a weight on his site he lists it as having a weight of six to oh I bumped the camera again sorry six to six point one grams wait for the scale to come up make sure it's zeroed exactly five point eight so even less uh, my little adapter here if you're going to use that so it adds point four well point three point six three so it adds point five for this adapter. Most of that weight is probably in the ends and the electrical tape I have in the middle. Uh, running it off a 150 milliamp battery, that brings your weight up to 10.6. Uh, if I add, if you happen to have one of these, I'll just do this quick. So 46.5, add that 52.2, uh, add another battery, 57.2. I think it's very du durable, doable, excuse me. I think keeping this setup below 60 grams is really important for not only flight time, but uh, the ability to have some extra throttle to use to get yourself moving forward at a speed. Maybe you want to fly it outside and fight a, a slight breeze. Um, but anyways, you'll have a little bit of thrust left over. So that's kind of my plan, and I will uh, mock this up and do some iterations, and then I can bring this back to the desk and, and do a quick video once over once I have the Quantum Wisp and the gnarly FPV backpack all set up and ready to go. I have some uh, footage walking around the house that I'll leave you with. 
Um, I'm probably only going to put a couple of minutes up, but you'll see um, how it handles light. When it has low light conditions, it does go to a black and white picture, which I think is appropriate. When it has good light conditions, it goes back to color, and it switches pretty quickly. I, it, this seems to be a quality camera. Um, I don't know how much it costs, but uh, I was pretty impressed. And I do just walk it around. I didn't take it outside. The weather ter today is terrible. Um, it's like 8 degrees outside. I am not going outside, and the camera lens would probably fog. And by the time I got set up, the battery would probably die from the frigid cold. So I'm going to leave you with that indoor footage of me walking the camera around. I hope you guys are all enjoying 2016. Subscribe if you haven't already. I am trying to post more videos as I have ideas of unusual things in this arena that pop up. Alright, thank you for watching.